Welcome, everybody, and thank you for listening to the Better Bushcraft Podcast, the place where you will learn the skills to succeed on your next outdoor adventure. My name is Tommy Clark, your host, and this is episode 16, Cordage. But before we get into today's topic, uh, here's what's going on here at Better Bushcraft. Uh, within the next few days, I'm going to be making two new videos. The first one I'm going to be working on is how to build a budget bushcraft kit. And in that video, I'll just show uh, you know the different types of knives and gear, fire starters, and other pieces of kit that you can get for uh, relatively cheap. So if you haven't started a bushcraft kit for yourself or if someone that you know would be interested in starting one, this would be the video for them also. And then on the other video, I'm going to be doing a bushcraft information resource video. And this will be the first video of the series showing you one of the resources that I use to uh, help make myself uh, make better bushcrafting uh, kits and also work on, on my skills and stuff like that. So I'll be showing you one of my resources that I use in that video. Let's see. Also, I got a uh, pretty interesting email from a listener in Colorado. Uh, his name is Vincent. And he sent me an email uh, talking about how the where he lives in Colorado that there's uh, big fires uh, going on right now. And I wasn't really uh, aware. I don't know where I've been, I guess. But I haven't been aware. But apparently where he lives uh, by Fort Collins... He said that there's uh, over 58,000 plus acres of uh, damaged uh, forest. And he said that uh, it got started by lightning and uh, he can see the, that it's very smoky every morning. So anyways, they're also on a statewide fire ban and they're not allowed to have a fire pit in the backyard for the next few weeks or even months. And uh, I could see why that would be. So, anyways, I just thought it'd be uh, interesting to bring that up about wildfires. You guys just make sure that uh, when you are out bushcrafting, to make sure that your fires are being put out correctly. And even though this one wasn't caused by uh, man, but by lightning, um, it's just a good idea to be on the lookout for that. And also, while you're out bushcrafting, in certain parts of the country just to make sure that uh, you keep a lookout for you know a large amount of smoke and if there is a uh, a forest fire going on how to evacuate from that safely so he also brought up the idea that I was talking to him about of putting a forum on my uh, website for you all and he said that uh, he likes the idea of the forum because he's been hesitant about checking others out in the past he says that, I believe you draw a different audience. Other channels seem to only attract end-of-the-world gun-toting zombie killers, while your channel seems skill and reality-based. I think your crowd would be more in line with what I am learning about and actually focused on bushcraft. And that's kind of a, a fun point that made me laugh because I go to several different uh, forums about bushcraft and you always seem to get that crowd about uh, talking about end of the world zombie apocalypse type stuff which you know it's fine for fun and whatever but some people kind of go overboard so what I want to do with my forum is to be more about the skills and the tools and gear and stuff and building an audience around that so hopefully that will be going up shortly and then lastly, he talked about how he listened to my podcast the other day, which would have been episode 15, uh, the 10 bushcraft scenarios to play out. He said, I like the scenario on having your pack submerged in underwater. It brought to memory something that happens once in a while. My wife and I both carry camel packs when we go out to ski or hike. Just last Saturday, which wasn't the first time, she did not secure her lid completely after filling the bladder and caused water to leak into the basin of the pack. And he also said that it's happened uh, before, and uh, his water bladder busted, and it causes the slow leak all day. And he said, sometimes your gear gets wet from the inside as well, and it's good to check after a refill or a fall. And uh, that brings up an interesting point. I was thinking about, you know, just if you fell into a lake or stream or something, but I never thought about because in my backpack I have the option of carrying a bladder, and uh, even though I don't do that usually, if I did, that would just be another way for all your gear to get wet and possibly damaged. So just another uh, thought to bring to mind. So thank you, Vincent, for that email. 
All right, well, going on. Um, also, I'm going to be doing an article series uh, starting this week. is called What's in My Pack? And I'm, it's going to be uh, the first few is going to go up this week about what I carry uh, with me, my personal gear, and why I carry it, and a few pictures of stuff like that, too. So um, I think I'm going to start that this week, and that will be a long-running series since I have tons of gear. So anyways, with that being said, let's jump into the main topic, which I said was all about cordage. And I have... Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different types of cordage that I'm going to be talking about. And everything in here is something that I carry most of the time. So, I'm going to start here with paracord. Now, paracord, most of you know, is parachute cord. It's also called 550 cord. Um, and some other names. But so basically, it's a great all around cordage that should be carried by anyone. Um, doing bushcraft in your gear bag, in my personal opinion. Uh, it's something that you should at least start with when you start getting into bushcraft. Now, paracord comes in a variety of colors, which is kind of cool because um, you don't have to just get black or green or tan. You can get all sorts of crazy colors, you know, pinks and oranges and yellows, which, you know, the color doesn't really matter, but if you're uh, wanting to... Like what I do is I have a couple different, I have my green, which is used for my tarp lines and stuff like that. And then I have my tans, which I keep full length. Um, and then that way it's kind of easy. I'm like, oh, okay, this one I know is 100 feet long and these are only 20 feet or something like that. So anyways, something cool about paracord is that it can be broken down into smaller strands if you you know pull out the strands in the middle you can I think there's seven six or seven strands in the middle of that and you can use those as well so like I said I carry at least 150 feet of it in my bag uh, which 100 of that is non cut you know I just like to keep a full length uh, never cutting that paracord length and also others in pre-cut strands for a variety of tasks so uh, let's see, paracord has a tinsel strength of about 550 pounds, hence 550 cord. Um, and a cool tip about it, if uh, you burn the ends when they are cut, uh, it helps to keep them from fraying, something that I learned a while back, well, quite a while back, but for those of you that don't know, you know, you cut the paracord, and if you leave that line kind of frayed, it starts to kind of come apart, so just uh, take your lighter or whatever, and kind of melt the ends to keep it from doing that. And uh, if you have, let's say you have like a seven foot length and uh, a ten foot length, and you need, you know, it all one strand, you can actually fuse the two lengths together. Same thing, you know, kind of melt the ends of both of them and kind of push them together and let them fuse together. So um, the strength goes down if you do it that way though so don't use that for anything that you're going to be putting a whole lot of weight on so about paracord uh... the task that can be used for is i mean the list is endless but the basics are shelter building you can use it as a hammock line uh, binding for your structures like when you're putting up uh... like a tp structure fishing line traps snares you could use it for a bow for a bow drill um, use it for net making like I said the list goes on and on but you guys get the idea and like I said this would be my first choice for anyone who is starting out with bushcraft and and cool ways to carry more paracord I'm sure you've seen it before but you can make them into bracelets watch bands belts and wrapped around gear to carry the extra cordage so I have uh, like four or five different bracelets that I've made um, using just the uh, cobra stitch that I wear, you know, obviously only one at a time. So I wear one of those, and then I also have my watch band that I made out of paracord. So, and I think that gives me around just under 20 feet of extra paracord, just you know, wearing it as a bracelet and watch band. So something cool to think about. And paracord can be found at military surplus stores, uh, gun shows, and online. So that was the first one. Uh, the second list, or the second one on my list for uh, cordage is bank line. 
Uh, bank line is very useful and is second on my list. And for those of you that don't know what bank line is, it's uh, basically just line. Uh, you usually find it in the fishing section, like at Walmart or outdoor shops. And you know, it's uh, pretty strong. It's probably like 130. I think the one I carry is like 130 pound uh, strength, but it could do a variety of tasks that paracord cannot or cannot do as well. Like I use mine because it's an excellent choice for certain types of snares. Um, you could use paracord for certain types of snares that I do, but it's not. At, it's a little bit more bulky and cumbersome, whereas Bankline makes a much better choice. So, and another reason why I like using Bankline is because I can carry quite a bit of it in a very small space. It folds up real nice. And it's usually not as strong as paracord, like I said, um, but it still does uh, a variety of tasks really well. So uh, alongside the paracord, bank line also comes in a variety of colors that you can get, and, and it does many jobs, like, such as shelter building, the bow for the bow drill again. Um, it's really good for bindings, like binding uh, like wood together to carry. Uh, snares, traps, fishing line, net making, etc. So I carry over a hundred yards of it or so in my pack without taking too much room. And you can find it at Walmart, outdoor shops, and online. So the two main cordage uh, type that I have in my pack at all times is paracord and bank line because I could pretty much do everything that I want to with those two. And they don't cost very much at all. I think the roll of bank line that I bought was only like three or four bucks at Walmart and I still have quite a bit of it and I've been using it uh, a lot so just a thought there alright number three is twine now what I carry is jute twine and uh, that's usually how I carry my twine is just jute twine and it can do a variety of other tasks um, just like the other cordage but it has advantages and disadvantages so one of the advantages it doesn't take a large amount of room. Um, disadvantage is it doesn't have a large amount of strength. So, but it can be used as a fire tinder very well, and that's usually where I use my jute twine is uh, using it for uh, a fire starter. But and I uh, break down the fibers and add some tree sap, lard, or just use it like it is. So, like I'd cut maybe uh, a six inch length of that jute twine off or so break it down in my fingers until it's like very uh, fibrous and it's uh, you know f it's like basically like hair and it takes a spark from a fire still very well and why I add tree sap or lard is just because um, it burns a lot longer if you have some type of uh, sap or lard on it almost like a candle so but I also use it for like holding together birds nests when you build a bird's nest and you need to hold the bottom of it so when you're blowing air from underneath uh, it just kind of helps hold that all together uh, like that um, also use it for making homemade pot scrubbers like if you guys are out in the bush and you need to scrub out your pots after dinner or what have you you know you just go cut off a like a wrist size batch of grass fold it over and then tie it with that jute twine and you have a really easy and awesome pot scrubber so I use it for that um, but like I said in a pinch it can be also used for shelter building and a bowstring and you can find jute twine like anywhere Walmart outdoor shops and craft stores even so I carry about 50 feet or so of it in my pack and about 10 feet in my EDC kit which is my leather pouch and that is mainly just for fire starting like I said all right, number four in our list of cordage is fishing line. You know, fishing line is something that is often overlooked by bushcrafters. Um, obviously, it's well suited for fishing with or without a pole. Uh, when I use it, I usually use mine to tie off the tree limbs, like live tree limbs, and I carry a variety of strengths. So I don't really deal with the fishing pole a whole lot unless I know I'm going to be doing a lot of fishing and then I take my uh, collapsible fishing pole but you should just tie it off to live tree limbs and uh, do it that way and I carry 20 pound test with me and 6 pound test most of the time so the thing about fishing line is you can carry over like a hundred yards in a tiny space I mean 
basically takes zero space. So I take mine off the spool it comes on to save on that space. So, you know, you buy fishing line, it comes on this round spool. And I take it off that and kind of like put my finger, two fingers out, and I wrap it around that until I get as much as I need, and then I just cut it off that way. Um, I haven't had really problems with uh, it getting, you know, knotted up or whatever, and it saves up a whole bunch of space. So, and if you add just a couple of hooks and weights, then you have a fishing kit right there. Then when you're ready to fish, all you have to do is add a bobber. You know, you can get a piece of uh, wood or other material for a bobber and then dig up some worms or grubs or even find bugs and then you're set to fish. So one of the obvious choices uh, for getting food is just carry some extra fishing line. And then if you're in a pinch, you could also use your fishing line for holding together framing sticks for a shelter uh, and it can be used for other tasks too. So... And you know, once again, fishing line, really easy to find almost anywhere, Walmart, bait shops, outdoor stores, and other places. So, you know, for the price and the lack of space it takes, you can't go wrong carrying it with you. You know, $2 and you have some cordage that you could also use for um, getting food or what have you when you're bushcrafting. So it's pretty much a no-brainer there. All right, let's move on. Um climbers rope I carry climbers rope with me on occasion if I have room on my pack I usually don't pack it in my bag but I have some side straps that sometimes I'll take it with me so it's something that's not necessary all the time but it does make bushcrafting easier once in a while uh, the first use of it is to obviously like descend cliffs and stuff like that but it can be used in many other ways uh, such as bringing down branches in a tree um, you know, if you're trying to bring down uh, a f dead branch in a tree, you can just tie like a, a stick or wrap around a rock and throw it around that branch and then pull it down that way. And it's really easy to use for that. But it could also be used for like a clothesline, like at your camp, or use it for the tarp line. Carrying gear on you, such as a machete across the body. Um, something that I learned on a YouTube video a while back was just to... Uh, wrap it across you almost like Rambo and then tie off your machete onto it and it's a pretty neat way to carry your machete without having it like hanging on your body off your belt the whole time so something pretty cool you know I only carry about 30 feet of it since I don't have steep hills here in Kansas everything's really flat here so I don't really need to like descend but you know um, it would vary upon your terrain maybe you do have a lot of rocky cliffs and stuff like that and it might be helpful for you um, and you can find it in outdoor stores and online so with the climbers rope also I add some carabiners to my gear bag when I do have it just in case um, be sure to use only climbers rope for climbing though because some ropes are not well suited and not as strong as others. Um, really just make sure your gear is uh, supposed to be for climbing if you're going to use it that way. So if you're not going to use it for that though, you can use just regular rope and you can get that like at Walmart or other stores. So that's it for the climber's rope. Uh, let's see. The next one I have on here is flat rope. Um, Flat rope is another type of cordage I carry with me from time to time. Um, it's usually used to like tow vehicles, you know, that like white. Uh, it's probably like three quarter inch uh, wide and really flat. But it can be used for many other purposes as well. You know, I bring it in my pack when we drive to a bushcrafting location that might be muddy since getting stuck is a possibility. You know, you could just. Uh, pull yourself out of you know a predicament, but you can use it for other things too. Um, and, you know anything that you could use other ropes such as tarp lines, clotheslines, bindings, or whatever. And the cool thing about flat rope is it's very strong. I don't remember what it is, but it's ridiculously strong. Um, and I carry about forty feet of it uh, bundled up in a small space in my bag. So. And you can find flat rope in like automotive shops and other places. All right, next one, moving along, is bungee cord. Now, I carry a few bungee cords with me on my pack for certain tasks. But the main reason that I use it is for snares. It makes an excellent choice for like those spring snares. You know, when you don't have a small sapling uh, to tie off on, 
Uh, you know, you can use a bungee cord and just tie it around a tree, and it acts as the same thing. Um, let's see. It, I'll, like I said, I was just reading my notes. Uh, it, it pulls your animal off the ground so you can retrieve it alive. So, you know, bungees can also be used to secure your gear to, like, you or your pack. Sometimes I strap some stuff down on the outside of my pack, so those are really nice just to make sure that they're not going to slip out and uh, I'll lose it. So you can also hang your food pack off the ground away from animals using bungee cords and so on. And, you know, you can buy them almost anywhere. And it'll cost you only a couple of dollars to get, like, three or four of them. And uh, if they're good quality, they're going to last you a long time. And uh, they don't cost very much and can be used for a lot of different things. So something to think about if you don't carry any bungee cords with you. Uh, maybe throw a few in your pack and see what you can do with them. Now the last two that I have on here isn't technically cordage. But I uh, thought they kind of get grouped in the same uh, category. And that is duct tape. Um, it goes right along with the same thing that we're doing just because it helps fasten things to... Uh, each other and duct tape obviously can be used for patching up your gear making some items waterproof um, really good to secure bandages in a pinch let's say you get a nice cut or scrape on you and uh, you need uh, something to put the gauze and strap it down you can use duct tape works really well I've also seen something interesting that um, I haven't tried yet but I saw is how to use it for a fire starter heard it's really good for that and uh, a variety of other things so you can carry a lot of duct tape in a very small space once again that's one of the reasons why I love carrying it and how I do it is I just wrap about 30 feet of it around like an old credit card to save on space so if you're like an old credit card or movie place card or anything of that shape just wrap the duct tape around it and you can put tons of it in a very small space so something to uh, give you an idea that way you don't have to carry like the whole roll and it takes up so much space you could just do it that way and it can be torn in thinner strips to make it go farther um, it's really great at patching leaky holes in your tarp or tent so I would suggest you don't go bushcrafting without it because it's pretty annoying <laughs> when you're like in your shelter and it starts raining or what have you and you didn't realize you have a little hole in your tarp and then it starts dripping on you. I mean, if you had some duct tape, patch it up, boom, done. So um, that's uh, something to think about. And duct tape can be purchased anywhere. You know, it's cheap, comes in a variety of colors. And another tip on the duct tape, you know, if you get like that hunter orange or a bright orange, it's a good choice to signal a rescue. You know, you can make flags out of it, mark your bag with an X while you're walking, and so on. So it's also a, a signaling device if you are clever enough to uh, use it that way. So the last one I have on here is electrical tape. Um, I carry electrical tape on me just for um, a couple different reasons. Uh, it's really great for securing bandages. Uh, you could subdue bright colored gear for camo. Let's say you have you know something bright out there and you are out hunting or whatever. Um, you can subdue the colors just by wrapping it with duct tape. Uh, it's good at temporarily fixing gear and so on. So I carry a roll with me at all times just in case. Uh, I f use it more than I think I would. So um, just something to think about. And the last note I have on all of these is uh, it's a good idea to learn a variety of knots to be able to use them correctly. You know, cordage isn't very useful if you don't know how to use them properly. So if you learn just like the basic knots, there's probably like eight or so basic knots, it will help you tremendously. Uh, some of the basics is just like the overhand, uh, the sliding knot, trucker's hitch, and etc. So... I suggest um, if you don't know how to do those, go on YouTube and just kind of type in like camping knots or bushcraft knots and learn some of the basics. I mean, there's hundreds of different knots, but you can get along nicely with just learning about eight of them or so. So I think I'll be doing a video series on knots soon to help you learn what you need to know. Maybe like the top 10 knots and the usefulness of them, when to use them, how to use them 
and stuff like that. So, anyways, uh, that is the end of the show. Be sure to check out YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel. Watch the videos, and if you like it, please hit the like button. That way, people can say, "Hey, this is actually <laughs> worth watching." Also, check out Twitter. If you're not a part of my uh, Twitter audience, be sure to go to Tommy B. Clark. That's T-O-M-M-Y, the letter B as in boy, C-L-A-R-K, and uh, subscribe to me that way. And also, check out the website. Um, getting a lot of traffic, and I appreciate you guys' emails and stuff like that, too, and the comments. And I'm working on making that uh, a lot better place for you guys just to check out and also adding the form so be sure to check it out and uh, this last thing the question of the week is which of these cordages that we discussed do you carry and why and did I miss a use for them maybe there's some really awesome use for one of them that I forgot um, I'd really appreciate if you send me an email at idea at betterbushcraft.com and I'll be sure to bring it up in a future episode and speaking about Episodes. If you guys can go to iTunes, I'm pretty sure that's where most of you guys are downloading the podcast, and just leave a comment uh, on the page. Uh, it'd really help out spreading the word about the show and uh, letting others know what you guys think of it. So I appreciate if you rate the show and comment for me. So anyway, anyways, guys, uh, thank you for listening, and I'll be back next week with another episode. And until then, you guys take care.